championship. So, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, this year it's a big game. Uh, they've got an outstanding football team, and uh, you know, we're coming off a couple of games where we haven't played well, and it's going to be interesting to see how we play. But we do have J.R. Revere back in the lineup today. J.R. will start. He's practiced all week and uh, had a good week of practice. And you know, I think our guys are ready to play. We'll see. And uh, a couple of great running backs that are going to be featured in this game: Lewis Ivory for them, and of course Adrian Peterson on our team. Well, two outstanding running backs, and. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I don't know what else you can say about Adrian Peterson. Uh, he's just been a, a great, great player, and hopefully he'll have a big day today. History says this might be a high-scoring game, but uh, two great defenses also in this game. You can never tell. I mean, that's, uh, it doesn't matter. I, if we can win the game 3-2, to it would suit me. All right, Coach, when we come back, first half highlights of Georgia Southern versus Furman, but first, the Coca-Cola play of the day. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2001. Brady Posk alongside Eagles head coach Paul Johnson. Coach, what a, a great atmosphere here. Over 21,000, the, the sixth largest crowd, and they got to witness something really amazing before the game when Adrian had his number retired. Well, and, and it was an honor well deserved. I think that, uh, you know, our athletic department, we talked about it earlier, and we talked about maybe doing it at a banquet, but, uh, you know, we just felt like that, that it needed to be out here where everybody had watched him play, and certainly he's a very, very special player. Uh, person and a, and a great football player. And Adrian, uh, a, a big part of this game also, we'll, we'll pick it up, we get the ball first on the 23-yard line and Jair Revere sets the tone early on a, a, an impressive drive for a 34-yard uh, run. Right, well we ran a little midline option and we blocked it a little differently than we have all year. And uh, Early on that first drive, I think we, you know, we were able to pop it out of there and give them it was a different look and uh, you couldn't ask to put together a better opening drive to a game. Uh, we were able to you know, mix in, we hit a big pass play on second and 11, get a first down and, uh, you know, take it down and, and punch it in the end zone. And J.R. Revere would take it from five yards out. That was the, actually the only third down of the entire drive from five yards out, 7 nothing with a 5-14 into the game. Right, and it was good to jump out, uh, you know, take the opening kickoff and then establish uh, the lead early. And uh, an impressive opening drive, and that's actually the first touchdown Furman has surrendered in the first quarter of this year. We kick to them, and uh, the defense comes up big. They, they, they bend a little bit today, but uh, a great defensive job when we get the ball back. Right. Well, we let them drive the ball a little bit, and, uh, you know, they were able to punt us out, I think, down here on the three-yard line. But we, we got them stopped and got them off the field, and if you can do that and make them to punt, that's, uh, that's all you can ask. And we get the ball back in the first quarter with 519 left, and Adrian takes off to start the drive on a nice 15-yard run. Well, we were able to knock it out, which I thought was really important. You know, they had us pinned up back inside the five, and we were able to make a couple first downs and knock it out of there. And, and we'd made another first down on third, you know, and had a holding penalty, which is just, you know, we, continue, we can't continue to do that. We would give the ball up, and uh, their big tight end burned us uh, a couple times on, uh, on offense today, but we were able to shut them down and, and force them to punt at the end of the first quarter. All right, well, they hit us in a two-deep zone one time with a tight end down the middle. That's where you're a little bit soft, and uh, we, we kind of lost coverage on him a little bit, and, and uh, their quarterback did a nice job getting to him. And after the, the first score, th the game's starting to settle down a little bit. Uh, Furman later with the ball on a, a fourth and four. They, they attempt it from the 34-yard line, kind of out of field goal range, and an incomplete pass turns the ball back over to us. Right, again, they were kind of in between and, and out of range a little bit, and it would have been nice to have taken the ball and, uh, and, and punched it in on them. We, you know, there again, we get a penalty. We line up wrong and, and get a grounded penalty on second down that really just takes you out of any chance to have a drive. And the Furman Paladins would take over uh, late in the second quarter, and they would... Uh, they would drive all the way down to the about 12-yard line when uh, Michael Youngblood came up with a big sack to uh, push him back about 11 yards. Right. Well, they made a fourth down on us. They had fourth and inches, and it was a time-consuming drive, but they weren't getting any big plays, and that's the good thing. We were on defense. We weren't giving it up in real big chunks. And, uh, the, uh, you know, we make a big sack on, on uh, second down, and they got third and must have been 25 or something. And, uh, you know, they hit us with a draw play, and, and we must have missed three or four tackles and let him get in the end zone to give them all the momentum going into halftime. And that was Lewis Ivory who had that 23-yard touchdown run. Tie it up at seven. 37 seconds left in the half. Uh, we get the ball, and after a penalty, we run out the clock, and right, uh, just, we go to the half tied at seven. Well, there again, we had poor field position, just kind of 
get in at halftime, and uh, we'll play the next 30 minutes. We set the tone early, got on, got on the board first. Uh, we let Furman back in the game, but how do you feel overall after the first half? Well, I told our guys at halftime, I said, hey, you know, we're we're playing okay. I said, other than the one draw play defensively, we were doing okay. And offensively, we drove the ball, and we didn't kill ourselves with penalties. And uh, there wasn't a lot of adjustments to make. We talked about some things. It was really pretty calm in there. And uh, the... Uh, before we came out to start the second half, I told them, I said, guys, I can't want it for you and the coaches can't want it for you. you got to want it for yourself. And the team that wants it the most and takes care of the ball in the second half is going to win the game. And that was the key to the game. And when we come back, we'll have highlights of the second half between Georgia Southern and Furman. But first, it's the Ask Coach Johnson question. Back to Georgia Southern football 2001. Time now for the Auto Shine Ask Coach Johnson question. Coach A, Jason Clary from Roswell, Georgia asks, how are you going to prepare or how did you prepare differently during this week's practices for uh, Furman's running game? And be obviously, Lewis Ivory, who burned us last right. year. Well, uh, quite honestly, we try to prepare pretty much the same way every week. It's, uh, you know, we'll break down and, and defensively we'll have a little inside drill where the uh, scout team will run the opposing team's run plays. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we'll, you know, do a 15, 20-minute segment of that. Mm -hmm. Then we'll break out into a pass scale for the scale plays. And then we'll mix maybe 18, 15 to 20 plays together in a team and mix them up and run them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only thing you do is you do, you just rep, and it's it's reinforcing fundamentals and playing blocks. You know, if uh, if you're playing the tight end and he blocks down, you got to squeeze. you got to either make it bounce or turn it back, mm -hmm. depending on what the defense is called. And... Uh, and that's what we did. Uh, you, you know, you, by game plan, you may involve the secondary a little more in run uh, stopping. And there were times today that we had eight, nine guys in the box to play the run. And I think that's why they threw the ball maybe more than people thought they would. Did you go back and look at last year's tape when Ivory had 300 yards, or did you mostly just focus on what he's done this year? No, you, you look at both. I mean, we looked at this year's tape, and you look at last year's. But, you know, it's, it's usually not so much scheme things as a year ago as people just not doing what they're supposed to and uh, and that type of thing. So uh, we didn't have to change a whole lot. We just tried to play better. And Ivory had a, a decent day today, but we contained it pretty well. You can be a part of the Ask Coach Johnson segment by emailing us at abc22tv.com. When we come back, second half highlights of Georgia Southern versus Furman. Ask the coach and win big. Send in a postcard or register online at abc22tv.com with a question about the Georgia Southern Eagles. Then watch Sundays at 1 with Brady Fossick and Coach Paul Johnson. If your question is selected, you'll win an autographed limited edition print and be in the running to win an autographed Eagles jersey. So register today. Then watch all the action Sundays at 1 on Georgia Southern football with Coach Paul Johnson on ABC 22. I think Coach Johnson he quit coaching and be a fortune teller, but because he came up to me right before I came out for the second half for the coin toss, he said the first team to turn the ball over is going to lose. He was worried exactly. And, uh, and lo and behold, they turned it over, and he just kind of looked at me, and I was like, oh, Lord, here we go. <laughs> Turnovers were the key to this game. Two great teams going head, head to head. I mean, what, what more can you expect, you know? That was just uh, the, uh, the factor in the game, uh, special teams and turnovers. Anytime you can turn the ball over, you know, this close in the end of the game, uh, definitely good things are going to happen for you, especially when you got the lead. Seeing the signs up, saying thanks, AP, 
you know, even when I was a little, little, uh, little winning out there, you know, I looked up and having all the people behind you, you know, you can't let them down. So was this got, your best game? One of them. I say one of them. It'd be one I always remember because our last home game, so plus we beat Furman. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2001. Time now for the second half highlights of Georgia Southern and Furman. Coach, we kick them the ball first, and uh, Chris Brown comes up with a, a nice open field tackle to set the tone for the defense. Well, a great play on special teams because they had been very good returning kicks all year, and, and we haven't backed up. We got them, I think, pinned down back inside the 20 on about their 13-yard line. They would drive the ball all the way down to the 13 when uh, Michael Youngblood on a first down comes up with a nice tackle for a two-yard loss on Ivory. Right. Well, they came out right after the, the kickoff return and hit us for, on about a 30-yard play. They really kind of changed field position, and they put together a nice drive and, and moved it down. And once they got down in the red zone, Mike Youngblood came up and made a nice hit. We would hold them to a 30-yard field goal attempt, but Furman takes their first lead of the game, 4-16 into the third and it's 10 to 7 at that point. But we take the ball right back, and, and we start to move, and we started off with Mark Myers on an option uh, for 12 yards. Right, we started running the option, getting the ball pitched quickly a little bit, and Mark was getting downhill and mixing it up and doing a nice job executing. We were putting together a nice little drive ourselves to answer. Then on second and four, we had some very nice second down plays today. Uh, Adrian Peterson takes off for 20 yards all the way down to the Furman 37. Right, well, we were hitting some zone plays. that They were taking him on the option. It was hard to get him the ball, but... We were hitting some zone plays with him, and uh, he's a tough guy to bring down. Fourth and two, got to do a little coaching here now at the 20-yard line, 29-yard line, and you have Myers for three yards for a first down. I just felt like that was just a little maybe, you know, on, on the cusp of being our range field goal-wise, and uh, I thought that we were executing pretty good. We ran the option, and Jay executed and got it pitched to Mark, and he made the first down. And then on a third and four, it's uh, Adrian, a nice run for four yards, and that was a, a big first down on that play. It was a big first down, and he broke a, a, a tackle there and was able second effort to get the first down. And that would set us up for a 35-yard field goal attempt by Scott Shelton to tie it up at 10 with 4.13 left in the third quarter. Scott with a nice kicking day today. Scott did a nice job kicking the ball today, and that one was dead center. There wasn't any question about it. Berman would take over, and at the end of the third quarter, into the fourth quarter on a second and two, it's, I guess, the play of the day, we can call it. Napier fumbles, and Corey Middlebrooks is at the bottom of the pile with the ball, and we take over at the 24-yard line. Well, great play, because they put together a nice drive to come back down and mm -hmm. deep in our territory, and I think he just kind of dropped the snap, and uh, Corey outfought him for it in, in the pile. And doing what we've done all year, uh, trying to capitalize on the turnover, we start on a second and seven. JR to pass to Zareem Walden for 38 yards down to 36, and the place is starting to rock right now. Well, it was a great pitch by, by Z. Uh, you know, it was right in front of us on the sideline. The ball was unthrown a little bit, and uh, Z stopped, made a catch, made a move. I thought he was going to go down the sideline and score. Uh, we had to talk to him. He got caught from behind. <laughs> then on the third and four, JR takes off in a nice 18 yard run, and that gets us all the way down to the 12 yard line. Right, and there again, we were making some uh, making some third down plays and chewing up uh, a lot of yardage on the division. Adrian stepping up big uh, inside the uh, 10 yard line on second and seven, a nice seven yard run to put us first and goal at the two yard line. All right, first and goal at the two and, uh, you know, you, you ought to have a chance to knock it in there if you've got four plays in the two-yard line. Two plays later, J.R. Revere dives in for the touchdown, and we regain the lead 17-10 to 10 with 10.33 left in the fourth quarter. Well, and it was a big momentum swing, too. You know, they were driving the ball and all of a sudden drop it, and we were able to take the turnover and, and get a touchdown. So it was a huge momentum swing. And still a lot of time left in the game, and the defense comes up huge right after that touchdown on a third and seven. It's Chris Brown again coming up with a huge tackle for a loss on a, a little swing pass that forces them to punt. Right, and Chris did a nice job. We did a nice job mixing up our defenses. We played a lot more zone in the second half and fourth quarter, and we've been playing a lot of man, and uh, you know, our guys did a nice job of coming up and tackling guys and, and stopping them short of first down. Unfortunately, when we got the ball back, we weren't able to chew up too much time on the clock, and Furman would take the ball back with 7.34 left in the game, and on a fourth and 10 from the 30-yard line, they go for it, and Derek Butler comes up with a huge interception. It's his actually first career pick. Well, it's a big play by Derek, and, uh, you know, I was kind of, in all honesty, hoping he'd just knock it down, but uh, he caught the thing, and... Uh, that was huge to, to get them stopped there. And all we had to do, I felt like, was, you know, knock out a few first downs and, and run the run the clock down, and we'd be in pretty good shape. And our guys went out there and put together a nice little drive. So we take over at the 27-yard line with five and a half minutes left in the game. And Adrian on second and six, 12 yards and a first down. Right, and again, the zone, zone play. And 
Our guys up front grew up some, I think, in the second half. They were doing a nice job getting fit up on people. Then Adrian on the first down from the 43, a huge 29-yard run, and we're really putting it down their throats right now. Well, we've got, got it down maybe in scoring uh, position, and one more score is going to really put them in a deep hole. Third and eight with uh, 238 left in the game. Peterson with a three-yard run. Furman calls their last time out. That sets up a 42-yard field goal attempt by Scott Shelton, and he was money. He nailed it. That pretty much iced the game. We're up by 10 with 2.28 left. Well, it, it's, the game's not over, but certainly if they have to score twice in two minutes with no timeouts, it's, uh, they're in an uphill battle. So we have a 10-point lead with 2.28 left in the game. Furman gets the ball, their first play, and it's Aaron Whitaker making an unbelievable vertical interception to bring it back to the 50, his first career pick, and good night, game over. Well, it was a great catch by Aaron, and, uh, you know, I'm on the sidelines yelling for him to go down. I didn't think he was ever going to go down, and... I saw one guy actually pull the ball almost loose, and he must have reversed field about four times. I know he was excited, and it was a big play that he made for it. And what a fitting way for Adrian to end his uh, regular season career. He got the ball in the final play of the game, and a glorious celebration. We went 20 to 10. The win streak at home stands at 37 now. Furman's first loss in the conference, and we're in the driver's seat for the conference title with only Wofford left. Well, we've got a chance. We've got the one game left, and uh, if we can win that game on the road, which will be very tough, then we can share, you know, the conference uh, championship, and because of the head-to-head, -head, we'll get the playoff move. Seniors have never lost a game on this home field. Could you talk about that a little bit? They're a special group. Uh, uh, you know, they just... Uh, this is a group, this, this football program, you back them into a corner and they come out fighting. And uh, I think that's the thing that I'm most proud of since I've been here, that uh, there have been times when people said we weren't going to win and we were down. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, when you tell us that, we come out fighting. They sure did. Big win today, 20-10 to 10 over Furman. When we come back, we'll talk about next week's game at Elon. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2001. A, uh, a very happy night here at Paulson Stadium tonight, Coach. And uh, next week, it's on the road. We actually finished the season with two games on the road, but first up is uh, a game at Elon. Elon has been a very good top 20 football program a year ago. They lost a lot of players, and their record is not as good as, as it normally is, but a uh, very dangerous team. they got a brand-new stadium. They, they like to be in the Southern Conference, and I, I know they like nothing better to make their season than to beat Georgia Southern. Run the wishbone on offense, so it kind of grinds you up, time-consuming uh, offense, and, and defensively, uh, you know, base out of a 4-3. That and, and last year, they had some really strong inside players. And this is still a game where we need to play well, even though it's not a conference game. We need to play well, and I think uh, we need to win this game to, to pretty much clinch a, maybe a playoff spot. And then with a week off, and then Furman left, uh, Things looking good as we sit right now at 8-1 and one overall and 6-1 and one in the conference. Well, right. We had a week off, and then we have to go to Wofford to play, which is always a tough place to play in Spartanburg. And, and there'll be a lot riding on that game, but uh, can't worry about that one. we got to get ready to uh, – we saw how that works last week. we got to go get ready to play Elon. All right, Coach, we'll see you next week. And the final from Statesboro tonight, Georgia Southern 20, Furman 10 as the Eagles improved to 8-1 and one overall. 6-1 and one in the Southern Conference. We'll see you next week on Georgia Southern Football 2001. Georgia Southern Football with Coach Paul Johnson. This week's highlights are brought to you in part by East Georgia Medical Center. The passionate care without compromise. Coca-Cola, always Coke. And by Rozier Ford in Statesboro, the dealership that does business the right way. Georgia Southern Football with Coach Paul Johnson.